My name is Daryl Cotton. I'm the director of the Center for Regenerative Medicine at Boston University and Boston Medical Center. So my background is as a pulmonologist, so I still do 20% clinical work and 80% research. So I have a long-standing interest in trying to engineer new lung epithelial cells and the developmental pathway uh, that forms the lung from the endoderm by mistake as a side effect in our work gave rise to thyroid cells. So we kind of went with the data and launched a thyroid project several years ago that's been really productive and very fun and exciting in addition to our long-standing original goal of making lung cells. So now we have two projects going on dedicated to both tissues. Well, these kind, the types of cells we make, uh, in particular the thyroid, are uh, easier to transplant in vivo and regenerate organ function. So most glandular cells or endocrine cells just need to be in contact with the blood supply to function. So in our lung project, it's actually quite difficult to transplant the cells and have them function. They've got to be in the right place for gas exchange. But with our thyroid tissues, we can actually put the cells in the kidney capsule uh, of a mouse, for example, that's hypothyroid, and we can measure the in vivo function of those regenerative cells, which, uh, as we published in the past, can rescue a mouse for its lifetime from hypothyroidism. I think our, our approach in the lab for, that's been successful in the past is to first start with uh, mouse pluripotent stem cells that are a bit easier to work with. Once the biology is worked out, it uh, recapitulates very nicely in the human stem cell model. So then we use patient iPS cells, pluripotent stem cells we make, for example, from hypothyroid patients or patients with lung disease. And those cells are currently uh, behaving quite nicely in the laboratory. And that's kind of the next step on the, the long journey towards uh, human clinical applications, which are still a ways off in my field. Well, I think the lung represents still a, a, a challenge in the field to recapitulate the three-dimensional intricate structure of lung tissues. So there's been a lot of success in making individual epithelial cells, but getting them to really behave as a community in three-dimensional structures that might allow gas exchange one day is, is really an unmet need in the field, and, and that's very, very challenging. I think when we start to model lung disease in a culture dish using cells, uh, most of us think that very strong monogenic drivers of disease is a logical place to start. And so we've picked two of the most common genetic mutations responsible for lung disease, cystic fibrosis uh, or the CFTR mutation, and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, a mutation that causes emphysema as principal foci of our studies. So for cystic fibrosis, I've seen uh, patients in my clinical training with cystic fibrosis. It was a exciting and logical uh, target to start with. Uh, very early in the field, we published iPS cells from those patients. And then um, our most current work is making functional assays, or we call them bronchospheres, in three-dimensional culture out of those patient-derived cells. And uh, it recapitulates uh, some of the dysfunction quite nicely in these 3D models. So uh, what I presented yesterday was uh, a foreskolin-induced swelling assay, which basically makes these bronchospheres, which are spherical by name, swell, and the measured swelling is a, is a quantitative readout of the, the function of the CFTR chloride channel, which doesn't work well in CF cystic fibrosis patients, but works perfectly normally in this assay, at least, after gene editing t to correct the genetic lesion that's responsible for the disease. In 2017, we're really excited about the new lung organoid assays that are coming to fruition. We're going to adopt uh, two forms of the assay, the bronchosphere, which we've been discussing, a spherical form, and the other is an alveolar sphere made by the air sac cells of the lungs we engineer from uh, these pluripotent stem cells we made from patients. Our latest, uh, most exciting project is using cells we've made from children or infants that have that are born with respiratory distress from mutations in their surfactant genes and we're going to try to build alveolar spheres that recapitulate the surfactant dysfunction that's responsible for these uh, children's disease and gene edit their cells to see what if anything goes away after the editing of the mutation.